Well, someone actually asked me to review something, so I'm going to. Because, first and foremost, I'm your tool to use and abuse as you see fit. And that movie is Matrix 4! The Revenge of the Matrix! Or whatever the name is! Who cares? The only way for me to solve this crisis is to be Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Oh, that's why they call it that. Well, I haven't seen any of the films in a while, but what I remember was the first film was something so great it broke movies for a while with excessive amounts of parodies and copycats, to a movie that was just okay but had enough cool action and kept people interested, to a movie so bad it somehow made everyone hate the second one, and both were forever flushed down the collective memory toilet. Also the Animatrix. It existed. Get out of here! Now, we have a new film that, from what I heard, Warner Brothers essentially forced Lena Wachowski to write and direct at gunpoint. And what she was ordered to make was a sequel that was also a reboot of a beloved franchise. Because that's all anyone in Hollywood knows how to do anymore. This ain't art! And y'all encouraging him! Actually, even though someone out there thought it was very important that I review this movie, how about I complain about Die Hard 2 for a moment? You see... Die Hard, the original movie, was great because it didn't follow all the rules of action movies at the time. John McClane gets hurt. A lot. He's not just some invincible Superman. People run out of ammo all the time throughout the movie. There's a finite amount of bad guys. It's always important to the plot whenever one of them gets killed. But then Die Hard 2 comes along and forgets all that and just makes another generic action movie. Not only that, but it's also basically just a repeat of the first movie, the only major difference being that it takes place at an airport instead of an office building. Another basement, another elevator. Look at the same shit happen to the same guy twice. So not only is it just treading over the same old ground, but it's doing a worse job of it by removing all the things that made the original film good. Motherfucker. It's like the creators had forgotten what it was that made their initial vision unique in the first place. Anyway, why am I complaining about Die Hard 2 in place of this obviously very different movie? Well, let's just say that I feel that it has a lot of the same problems as not only this film, but a lot of sequels, along with every single reboot. It's like the studios producing these films are too scared to try anything new, so they just rehash the exact same story with a few reskins and hope that audiences won't notice. Which is just weird. Originality, whether good or bad, is what makes movies great. And it saddens me that big budget movies aren't willing to take bigger risks anymore. Then again, it's also all our faults for constantly getting conned into going to see these movies over and over again like the sheep that we are. So I guess everybody's to blame. Okay, after saying all that, this film isn't entirely as much of a shot-for-shot -shot remake as, say, The Force Awakens. There is a lot of rehashing in this, especially of the original Matrix. But there's also a bit of tongue-in-cheek acknowledgement of it. Truthfully, if it was more obviously a satire, I would have said it was a genius movie. But it's left to just a few moments of this lampshading. Actually, you know what would have propelled this to new heights? Is if it was a comedy, or at least a comedy action like the newest Suicide Squad. That would have been something completely new for the franchise. James Gunn could even direct it, why not? Okay, major spoilers follow right now. The movie actually gets a lot more interesting after Neil Patrick Harris reveals himself to be the bad guy. This doesn't happen until very late in the film, so you still have to go through about an hour and a half of a soft reboot of the first Matrix before this happens. Though, truthfully, that wasn't too terrible, if I'm being honest. If you don't let the obvious similarities and equally obvious actual scenes from the first Matrix bother you, though, all the parts at not Zion are boring as fuck. By the end, this film turns into something that's pretty good. The last hour makes up for the first two-thirds of what is arguably shit. It helps that NPH steals every scene he's in, and practically runs away with the movie for that matter. 